Hi, today I'm ready to start putting the first layer of ink onto my lino cut. Taking us a little while to get there, but there was more to talk about than I thought. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a wash of nearly transparent blue onto this uh, lino cut for my first layer. And if you look at my inking table here, which if you remember is actually a shower door, this big sheet of glass, I've started mixing my colours. So what I've got here is um, a lot of extender with a little bit of blue in it. And if you look over here, you can see where I've mixed up my blue. Now that is a traditional oil-based ink and I've mixed a blue with a little bit of black just to knock it back a bit. I didn't want it too blue. And then um, the white bit here is actually to do with checking the colour. I can't really check the colour by putting it into the extender, um, but I can check it if I mix it with the white ink. So I've, I've mixed a little into the white to see what that shade of blue looks like. And once I was happy with that, then I can add a little bit of this into extender. So there is maybe 2% ink in that extender. Now I haven't put any dryer in that extender because I'm going to put a thin sheet straight onto the paper and I probably won't need any dryer. It'll dry really quickly anyway at that at that thin level. So you can see here I've already been rolling it out and when I use extender when I'm doing a sheet of colour I tend to stick with the traditional oil-based ink. I find the Caligo ink, uh, the extender for that is softer and I find it harder to use for big even sheets of colour. Now I know a lot of people use the Caligo inks exclusively and you can do it, it's just a little trickier, but if you want to use the traditional oil-based ink, remember it is compatible to mix the oil-based extender with the Caligo inks if you want to use the slightly stiffer extender, but you will then need to clean with white spirit because whenever you use oil-based inks you need to clean with uh, spirits rather than with water as you do with the Caligo. So now I am going to start rolling this out and I'm going to put a little bit of ink at the top here now I found with extender particularly that it's better to roll out enough ink for one print at a time. So I'm going to start working it. If you keep a load of extender at the top and just pull a bit down, which is something I would normally do for rolling out inks, I find that the extender can get um, quite stringy and messy. Whereas if I keep it in a, in a patch here and then just put a little bit as I need it, it seems to keep it in better condition somehow. And hopefully you can see that, you can hear the thumping of the roller. If you're new to lino cut and you're not used to rolling out, it's important to lift the roller at the end of the stroke so that the, the roller spins. If you just do this, nothing much happens. The ink is all travelling in a small part of the roller. You need that roller to spin and also you need to spend plenty of time working the ink. Oil-based inks particularly, the more you work them, the more even they get and the easier they are to use. So plenty of rolling out and you can see here looking at this, this is a really thin layer of ink that I'm using. I don't need much ink at all. Okay, so now I've got my ink on my roller, I'm going to need to put it onto the lino. So I've got my lino here and the paper all marked up. If you watched my previous film, you'll have seen how I've done the registration for this and I've put all my registration marks on. So that's ready and I can just lift that out of the way. Now, also from a previous film, you'll remember that I'm only going to partially ink this block. I'm not going to ink down here. And also I want to stay away from the thin branches of the tree. 
And that is really important because if you have fine detail like that, the fewer layers of ink you put on it, the better it's going to look at the end. So if you have fine detail and you can avoid inking it up at any layer that's irrelevant, avoid it because the fewer layers, the crisper it's going to look. So here we go. So I'm just going to put a little bit more on. So I would rather do this in stages and take my time inking up than risk putting too thick a coat on. So I'm just put a little bit more on and I'm just going to work that and you'll have noticed that you can't actually see very much where the ink is and where it's not because it's such a thin layer. The only thing that you can use if you're using ink this thin to see what you're doing is the shine on the lino. So it's worth sort of doing a bit of tilting to check that you've caught all the edges. And now I'm fully inked up. I'm going to carry on working because I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any um, parts where I'm going to get any marks or lines. When the ink is this thin, the pass of a roller can make a difference. So you can end up with problems where you have maybe one patch where there's a strip that's darker or maybe the edge of the roller has made a mark. So you have to be really careful rolling out. And just to remind you, don't forget, keep looking at the bar of your roller to check that the extender hasn't flipped up onto the bar and is going to drip down. Um, mine is, is nice and clean because I cleaned it out um, before I started this, but just keep an eye on that and wipe it off if you see it building up on the bar of your roller. So now I'm just going to go over it one last time and just very gently, and this is like I'm almost just easing it and just avoiding any marks. And I'm just going to let it settle for a second. Um, the ink, when it's this transparent and this thin, it's, it just needs a moment or two just to, to settle down before I put the paper down on it. So now it's ready to print and I'm just going to bring that paper down. I've just noticed there's a little hair on the paper. Let's just get rid of that. So that can come down. Now I need to control the pressure that I put on this. Controlling the pressure of the press I do with card. So I have about seven layers of this hard white card and I use those seven pieces to control how much pressure I put on the press and if I were using the heavy Fabriano Rosa Spina paper that I usually print with which is 285 gram paper then I'd be saying to you right we want a smooth coat I'm going to pack in the pressure and I'm going to haul on the press and we're going to get a nice heavy pressure on that paper to get a nice cohesive print. But this time we're using this delicate washi paper, 36 grams, this is the Kitakata, and so I don't want to put a lot of pressure on that, I don't want to crush that paper, it's so easy to squash that paper down and crease or damage it. So instead of um, Normally I've got my thicker paper and I've got four pieces of this card. 
I've now got much thinner piece, uh, much thinner paper, and I'm going to use fewer pieces of this card. I'm going to use three pieces of this card. So it's really a very delicate um, amount of pressure. So you're not going to have the pleasure of watching me hauling on the press because I, it, it's not much pressure I'm going to put on it. Okay. So I'm going to move that under the weight of the press. And then I'm going to pull across. Oh, I've had lots of questions. Let me just pull this across. And you can see no pressure really there. I've had lots of questions about this blue handle. Um, it was taped up when we bought it. I'm not sure why it's taped up. Um, but it's, it came like that, so I'm none the wiser. So, just let that go back and bring it out again. And now I'm just going to release it very carefully. And you can see, even though the um, press was barely touching down, it's plenty of pressure to take this impression. So I'm having to be careful with the paper here not to crease it as I remove it. So very slowly. Carefully. And I'm going to lay that down on some card so that you can see it. So I've sat the paper now on some white card so that you can see um, what I've been doing. And it truly is a very pale blue wash. What I'm going to do next is to maybe cut a little bit away and then I want to show you, I'm going to drop in a darker bleed of colour up on the top here so that the sky looks like it's it's. Um, bleeding from pale into dark. So that's the next bit of printing that I'm going to show you. So that completes the printing of the first layer and in the next film we're going to look at doing bleeds and blends of extended colour and I hope you've enjoyed this one and that you'll join me for the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.